Howdy folks, today we're taking a look at Hero Brigade from Zucchini People Games. Now this is a game that I backed on Kickstarter. Uh, I think that some of the extra stretch goal cards that are in here will still be available in the retail version, but don't quote me on that. Uh, I think, and I believe that you can get it through Game Salute starting from now. I believe that's the, the main outlets you're gonna be able to purchase it from. Now this is a card game, that's all that's in the game. There's, well there's cards and there's some extra hit point tokens. And basically one player, it's supposed to be a two player game. One player takes the villain deck and one player takes the hero deck and your superheroes battling supervillains essentially um it's a little bit more complicated than that it's uh, it feels like a combination of magic meets uh, a deck building game where uh maybe ascension where you're you know you're going into combat you're putting people out on the board you know making a party of people that goes and attacks the other group but the main way that you're doing that uh, or hand in hand with that is that you're actually buying cards from a common pool of cards putting them into your deck enhancing your deck trying to keep your deck slim but the win lose condition for this game is actually decking your opponent you're trying to mill cards out of your opponent's deck or just wiping out their entire party that's two different ways that you can win so it takes a lot of different elements from other games mixes them up in a way that uh, i'll say right now feels very unique and fresh but that doesn't necessarily make it a good game let's go ahead and go through the brief overview then we'll come back and tell you what i think All right, just a brief overview of Hero Brigade. The theme of the game is that one player is taking control of a group of heroes, the other player is taking control of a group of villains, and you're trying to destroy your opponent, essentially. How this actually works mechanically is that you're either trying to destroy all of your opponent's heroes or villains that might be out in their party group here on the table, which I'll get to in a moment, or you're trying to make them burn through every card in their deck. And actually what I mean by that is banishing cards from the deck, removing them from the game. If you can do that, if they cannot draw a full hand of four cards at the end of their turn when they're supposed to, or at the beginning of their turn, whichever it is, uh, then that person loses and you win. But that's quite a bit easier said than done. Now this game also has a solo variant, which I'm not really gonna get into because I really think this is meant to be more of a two player game, but there is a solo variant that does exist if you want to play it that way. Now let's go through some of the cards in the game. Uh, we'll start with the hero deck. Now there are the in both decks. There's basically uh, mostly heroes, but there's actually a couple of special cards as well. Now the hero cards have the same basic breakdown, but obviously they have different types. So you'll have the name here. All the heroes have sort of this indie comic type feel to them, like sort of like the tick. Uh, and then you have all, first you'll have all these like little key symbols over here, which just means that this card uh, it, it's mostly for enhancements. There are enhancement cards you can get from the resource deck, which is going to be only be able to equip to heroes that have heroes or villains that have these symbols. And by the way, let me make that clarification now: is that the decks are basically the, the same type of they function the same. They're heroes and they're villains, but there's nothing that drastically different about them. They all go off of these uh, keyword symbols. They all function and are used in the same way. They just look different and have some different abilities. That's all. But so you'll have these keywords here, or these uh, symbols here, which will tell you whether or not you can equip an enhancement on them or whether or not certain attacks will actually affect this type of hero or villain and so on. Now over in this, this corner, it's kind of hard to see, but the top little number with a heart are actually the hit points of this person. You actually have hit point tokens here, fives and ones. Uh, that's how many wounds you have to deal to that hero or villain in order to knock them out of the game. Now underneath that, the little diamond symbol is how many cards the person who controls this hero or villain has to banish permanently off the top of their deck when that hero is destroyed. So whenever it's not just that you lose control of this hero or villain and they go to your discard pile, you also have to banish that amount of cards on top of your deck, which can be painful. Now, every character is going to have three tiers uh, on their card, which basically is an ability that you use depending on how you play them. The first two are actually requiring you to play them into your party. So you have F, which signifies front, and then S, which signifies support. Your front slot can have up to two heroes, and your back slot can have up to three. And depending on where you put them, that's what you're actually going to be able to do according to the card while you're in that row. So Bert, for instance, in the front row has Clobber, which lets them deal during the combat phase, which we haven't gotten to yet, you can deal two damage to one uh, front row character and it is taunted, which is a special ability that means that character has to then attack Burt specifically on their next turn and they must attack. Uh, then he has armor, which is he gets to knock off a point of damage whenever he's dealt damage. 
but that's only what he does in the front. If he's in the back row in the support row, he, gets, he deals two damage to any target, and then he may move into the front row position. He has an armor of one as well in that point. Now, any card of these character cards, however, can also be used as a played card, which is to say you'd never put them onto the table. Instead, you just use their special ability here and put them in your discard pile. So Burst is that he can reduce all damage to one support character during the next fight phase of zero. Basically cripples one of the enemies as far as dealing damage or he can choose to acquire a card from the pool. So at the beginning of every round, you're gonna have a new selection of four cards out in this uh, support row here, which is basically the little bit of deck building to the game. So if you play a card that allows you to collect one of those, you're going to take the card of your choice, as long as it's still available, and put it into your discard pile. And this does not replenish until the end of the entire round of the game. You also have each, the hero deck and the middle deck both have two special cards, these reinforcement cards, which lets you just acquire a card from the top of the deck or put a hero in your party on top of your deck. Uh, so that's basically the hero thing. Um, I should also mention, like I said, not just that you can only have three in your support row, two in your front row, but uh, each deck has doubles or possibly even triples with the Kickstarter stretch goals of some of the heroes and villains, but you can still only have one of a particular hero or villain card in your party. You can't play the other one out. It's just like in Magic, you can only have one legend in play of a certain type or one planeswalker. So that's basically what that is there. Some of the cards have special abilities. So for instance, the police officer, you can discard all other police officers in your hand. If you discarded two or more, draw a card from your resource deck. And these are the weakest. Uh, the villain version of this is the henchman. They have one hit point, but they don't make you burn any cards if they get destroyed. And so on, all of these have different abilities. You have Dr. Cat, who's considered the mentor of the hero team. Uh, here's some other ones, Chill Factor and Zhang and... Uh, Citizen Beta. Some of these are alternate Kickstarter stretch goal art, by the way. Uh, Johnny Pyro, who's actually already on the board. Here's the alternate Burt art. Uh, and there's just a lot of different cards. Vasilisa, who's like some sort of witch. Um, let me show you some of the villain cards as well, just for the heck of it. Uh, the Excrementalist, lovely. Uh, Fred the Talking Tomato, uh, Potato. Uh, so this is where you see that it has some sort of tick feel to it. Chinese Calculus, absolutely my favorite name for a villain, absolutely. Uh, Natural Disaster, these are Kickstarter art cards, by the way. The Mime, here's this team's mentor, Professor Dog. Why dogs gotta be evil, huh? That's all I'm saying. Uh, Armakillo, here's their version of the police officer, the henchman, and so on. So you get the idea. These are all different cards, but they all work the same way as the hero cards. Now, getting back to the resource deck, you can, if you have the right cards, you can always, uh, well, let, let's go through the phases of the game. Let's, let's take a step back. So once both players have drawn their cards for the turn and you've replenished the resource deck, especially at the beginning of the game, then players are going to go back and forth depending on who has the start player marker, and this will change every round, of course. Um, and that's when you can either play cards from your hand, which is to say play one of these character cards or one of the uh, special cards, or there are even enhancement cards, which have both uh, an equip effect. You can equip these to a hero if they meet the requirements or a play card or a play effect on their turn. You're going to go back and forth either playing a card or uh, acquiring a card, well, you can potentially acquire a card if you have the ability to you do so. You can also choose, to, this is also the phase where you can choose to put your heroes down into play as well. So if you have a hero in your hand, that's when you would slot them into your front or support rows, following the same rules as ever, uh, and you can't really do anything with them yet. So you're either playing them as actions or putting them down on the board or using cards to play and acquire cards and so on and so forth. There are also secret weakness cards in this deck, I should mention, that are just pure junk cards that if uh, this gets drawn from the resource deck, if you're the one that draws it, or if you actually acquire it, you get to put it into your opponent's deck as junk. Uh, there's also clone and spy cards, which you can put into your opponent's party to take up space. So just some nasty things you can do to your opponent. Now, this is going to continue until both players either run out of cards or they decide to pass. If you pass, you're done in this phase. You cannot do anything else. When both players have either run out of cards or both have passed, then it goes to the combat phase, starting again with whoever has the first player marker. One by one, you activate one of your heroes, and of course, you tap them, or whatever the non-copyrighted version of that is, exhaust them, or disable them in order to do whatever their special ability is, which is usually dealing damage. So for instance, Johnny Pyro, 
Flaming Fist, two to one front, and two to one entire row of characters. You'll tap him, do your damage, of course, assuming I was the first player. Then the other player has the opportunity to use one of their heroes that are in play, and this is going to go back and forth. Now, like I said, every time that one of these heroes is wiped out, you have to banish cards off the top of your deck, which puts you one step closer to being defeated. Also, if now once you run out of cards in your deck, you're always drawing four every turn or drawing more if you use special abilities. Once you run out of cards in your deck, you have to reshuffle your discard pile to make a new deck. But if you do this, once you get done reshuffling and putting your deck down, you have to immediately banish another card off the top of your deck as well. So this game sort of rewards being efficient and uh, trying to defeat your opponent as quickly as possible before your deck gets worn down. And I touched, I glossed over some little minor things, but that's basically the game. You're just going back and forth, playing heroes, playing effects, uh, building your deck, trying to keep it uh, robust, but uh, as, as efficient as well, in order to either wipe out your opponent's party completely or get rid of all the cards in their deck. That's Hero Brigade. I mentioned in the beginning that this definitely feels like a unique and fresh game, and no one can take that away from Hero Brigade, I think. Not that I've played every game or every card game in the world, but I think that while this does take elements from other games, like I said, Magic and deck building games, like more like Ascension, not necessarily Dominion, uh, I think it puts them together in a way that feels very neat. I knew there was going to be deck building in the game, but honestly, based off of the gameplay videos that I saw and how the combat worked, I was like, well, there's not really going to be that much deck building. But it is it's significant in the game, and there's some twist to it. The, the idea that you're having to burn cards every time that your decks run out of cards in your deck, but also that you have to burn cards when your, uh, when your guys lose in combat. I mean, that is a significant thing in the game that's significantly unique because what it is essentially doing is it's tying your purchasing ability and your ability to have a strong deck directly to what happens to your people in combat. If your guys fail, then you're going to have to permanently get rid of cards, and that is no joke. Um, and it encourages you to really pay attention to how many cards you might lose from putting that guy out on the battlefield. I also, uh, so I like that aspect of it a lot. I also really like the way that the cards can be used for multiple things. So you can play a card in your, not just in your party. You put your card in your front row, it does something. You put your card in your support row, it does something else. This is very similar to Pixel Tactics. Um, I think the games came out around the same time, so I don't think one borrowed from the other, but it's the same kind of feel to it. Having this, uh, you know, putting them in a different station and having a different ability is a super cool thing. But then also, much like Pixel Tactics, having the ability to play that card as a card and just saying it does a special ability, uh, sometimes under only specific circumstances, like the cards that, uh, like the enhancement cards, which will either enhance one of your party members or you can play a card, play as a very powerful attack card for five damage, I think most or all the time, but it only does the certain enemies. So, it can, you know, but you always have something you can do with that card. The hero slash villain cards, you can either play them, and some of them will do some wacky effects, but most of them are going to let you either acquire a card from the center row, or just draw more cards from your deck, or even banish cards, like especially weakness cards if you get stuck with those. And you're weak, like either police officers or I believe henchmen cards, or the opposite version of that. I usually play this to heroes. So, really, really enjoy that. I really enjoy that. Anytime a game lets you play cards as different things and uh, having that versatility there, but also, uh, you know, being able to play them out in the, in the party, play them for different things, I really like that. Mixed with the deck building element, it really all works together very well in that regard. However, what I really don't like about this game is the combat because that just feels so boring and trite to me. The back and forth dealing damage it's not that exciting at all. Maybe I've just been spoiled by playing other games. Maybe you know. Maybe it was a bridge too far as going as far as going from deck building and going into that magic territory of the combat. I just didn't think that it worked very well. I thought that it was, especially since some of the heroes, when played as heroes or villains, when played as combatants out into your party, are clearly better than the others. And because there's no like summoning costs, I mean, if you if you draw a really you know badass hero or villain, you can freely play them. I mean, there's nothing holding you back other than the fact that you can't play it down to a filled party, and you have to respect the rules of how many in each row. But you know, I, like the guy Bert. Bert is a very very good hero, and you want to put him out as quickly as possible. And when he's out there, he is going to really annoy your opponent. And hopefully you're not you are not that opponent. <laughs> So, uh, and you know, a lot of hit points, hard to kill, 
does decent damage. You know, it, in other words, what I'm saying is it, because there's not a lot of cards in the game yet. There's not a lot of cards in the resource deck. There's not a lot of cards in each other player's deck. So when you get that really good banging card, it can definitely turn and swivel the game around. Now, each deck has really good cards that sort of complement each other. But if you get yours first, you're going to take a very early lead and dominate early. That's my opinion. And I just don't think that the combat is interesting enough. Putting tokens out like, I tap, I deal damage. What does that feel like? You know, it feels like magic. So in that regard, I think the game stumbles quite a bit. I don't think it does enough to differentiate itself itself from those other types of games. Um, if I can comment on the solo play a little bit, the it's weird to me. And please feel free if um, you think that I'm missing something uh, because I felt like the solo play was just not that interesting and kind of easy. Um, and I'm not bragging about that. I do generally feel like maybe I was missing something in the rules of the book um, because the author went to great lengths in the description of solo play to say, this is really tough and it will get really tough and you must be really, really precise in how you do things. And I just felt it was, after doing it twice, I felt it was pretty simple. It's possible that I'm missing something, but the fact is I don't think this game was meant to be played solo. I think it was thrown in there just as an add-on and that's neat and it's great to have that option because a lot of people do not have gaming groups or people they can game with regularly, but it's not the way to play this game. This game is meant to be a two-player game and uh, I think it's an okay game. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it because I am not thrilled with the combat system, but I really enjoy the card mechanics. I love the way that it mixes that little bit of deck building. It's not a heavy deck builder, but it mixes that with that variable card usage, which is just so cool and mixing those two things together. Uh, man, I just love that a lot. I love the artwork. I kept thinking the whole time, man, if Sentinels of the Multiverse had hired this guy, I would have no complaints about Sentinels of the Multiverse because I hate the art in that game, but the rest of that game is fantastic and phenomenal. But this artwork is fantastic and phenomenal. I really love this guy's art. I'm sorry. I'll I'll, uh, I'll probably flash the name on the screen because I want to give him some credit. But uh, and now I have to because I did that. But <laughs> but he deserves some credit because it's really good artwork. The exclusive Kickstarter art is actually done by uh, a different person who's also really good. Very different art style. Very more uh, realistic, quote unquote. But very very cool as well. So that is stellar. The design on these cards, also very good. Everything is very simple, easy to read, laid out very simply. And the game is not that difficult. The rule book is okay. I think the rule book was actually a little bit wonky because things weren't put in, uh, I don't think they were put in a very good order. The, the book looks kind of ugly and drab. And uh, the uh, author throws in a little, some little one-off snarky comments, which whatever, I had the same kind of complaint I had with Steam Park almost. Uh, but nevertheless, it's not a difficult game. You'll figure it out very easily. I think the design helps a lot. The art goes a long way towards ironing out, ironing out some of the faults I have with it. So that's why I think I might actually keep it because I do like those card mechanics and I do like that art. I just hope that maybe the, another expansion will come out that sort of makes the combat a little more interesting or maybe makes it into a full deck building game. <laughs> I love deck building games, so I'm inclined to say something like that. but. I think this is a definitely a try before you buy, because this is not gonna be for everyone. Um, I think there are better two-player card games out there for sure, including Pixel Tactics, which I mentioned, definitely a better game in that regard. Um, but there's something here, there's something here very unique. I really wanna see more of what this designer does in the future based strictly off of this, because um, I almost feel like this is just him ramping up, and I'm curious to see more. Um, but you know, if you like two player card games, um, and you have tried all those other ones I mentioned, um, and you like the artwork and the theme, it is definitely worth at least a try. Uh, just, you know, take that with a grain of salt when it comes to the combat, at least in my opinion. My name is Nick. This has been Board Game Brawl. And I'm reminding you to get out there and game every day and every way. Take care.